It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Tuesday, July 5th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that can't wait to see what each other's picks are for our official mock draft. Yeah, that'll be fun. Let's get the show going. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, once again. Welcome to Locked On Flyers. I'm Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here with prospect expert Russ Cohen, who's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. You can follow us on Twitter at Locked On Flyers. You'll keep up to date on all the Flyers news and our episodes. You can also email us at LockedOnFlyers at gmail.com. On today's show, we are going to get caught up a little bit with the Ivan Fedotov situation and then dive right into our personal mock draft for the top 10 picks. So excited to get to that. Locked on Flyers is free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you are listening right now. So subscribe. You'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. You can also catch us over on YouTube. And if you're lucky, you might get to see things like my cat who showed up (laughs) on yesterday's show. So uh, subscribe over there as well. Okay, Russ, we have a little bit of additional information on Ivan Fedotov. It seems he has been taken to a naval training base for his military service, kind of somewhere in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's the report. Um, I'm not even going to say like what was in that report, like, hey, you know, he's not going to be on the Flyers this year. We don't know. We don't this, know anything yet. This yeah. could all be, this could be for a little while. This could be for a long while. Like, there's just no way of knowing. Uh, I'm just glad he's safe. Yeah, I am glad, too, that at least people know where he is and that uh, I'm sure there will be actions to follow. And until we hear anything from the Flyers or from the NHL or, you know, some other official source, uh, again, we're just keeping in good thoughts for him and hope he's doing okay. All right, our mock draft. Now, we did a mock draft uh, as the Flyers representative of the Locked On NHL podcast family. And so all of the lottery teams had gotten together and given their pick in a mock draft. And like we've been talking about, this draft is definitely a little vague in terms of who could go where. There's a lot of differing opinions on these guys. And it's, I think, a little harder for some of these teams, especially in the top 10 that we're going to talk about today, to get a sense of what their priorities are and how that aligns with this particular draft. So I think it's going to make for an exciting actual draft day, but we are going to do our best to try and predict what those picks might be. We could be on the nose or completely off base. I mean, we, you know, you see Anything it in football. You see it in football. Sometimes three picks in, the guy goes, my mock's ruined. And that definitely yep. can happen. <laughs> yep. So very much looking forward to being wrong a lot. But uh, <laughs> like I said, we'll do our best. All right. The number one pick, the Montreal Canadiens are locked on NHL uh, friends over at Locked on Canadians picked Shane Wright. I think that is the correct pick. I think they're going to go with Shane Wright. It's the obvious pick. I think there's a lot of like behind the scenes razzle dazzle happening to try and like distract people. The pick Shane Wright. Yeah, it's Shane Wright. I mean, I think Slavkovsky's camp, you know, just said, hey, put your best foot forward. Tell them you want to be the top pick. Tell them you've played center. You know, maybe you'll you'll get some writing people writing about you. It'll be fun. And that's what they did. In the end, they're going to take Shane Wright. Yeah, 100%. Um, if there's anything that I think is a lock in this draft, that is it. And then everything yeah, else is kind of out the window. Yeah, the locks become few and far between. <laughs> yeah. All right. The number two pick is the New Jersey Devils, our friend over at Locked On Devils. Trey pick Yuri Slavkovsky, who is, you know, if all of the 
media reports are true, could be that number two pick. Uh, what's your take, Russ? My take is they're going to pick Slavkovsky too. And uh, I can make a great argument for Cooley. It doesn't matter because they've been looking for a power forward for a long time. And Pavel Zaka never really cut it for them, what they were looking for. So this seems like it's going to happen regardless. So that's that's where I'm at with that. Yeah, I still think the Devils are a wild card here. And I think it's going to go one of two ways. And this is where I'm just trying to take a risk here. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's a high percentage they could trade that pick because I think they're going to want to get that power forward plus other assets from another team. Okay. And trading this number two pick, I think, you know, they've been struggling to take that next step for the past few years. So trading this pick will get them, I think, closer to leapfrogging some of the other teams in the Metro. And that given the luck they've had in the draft over the last several years, they already have several really high quality picks in their prospect pool. So they're the team most likely, I think, to trade this pick. And then I think if they don't trade the pick, they're going to take Logan Cooley. And because I think they don't trust their their center depth, even though they think they have it. I don't think they trust it because, okay. they, again, with like Zaka, I just don't think they trust their own system at this point. So they're just going to load up on guys who can play center because they know they can float them to wing or float somebody else to wing. If I'm they perfectly OK with that. If I were running it, I, I would run it that way. But I just don't feel like they're going to. But. Um, just to back up your trade part, I mean, Fitzgerald did say he he would trade the pick, whether it happens or not. Who knows? But he did say he would. So, yeah, I, I think that if I'm gonna, you know, go out on a limb on something, this is gonna be the pick thing. two. You didn't wait long. <laughs> All right, pick number three, the Arizona Coyotes. Um, our friend Robin over at Locked On Coyotes picked Logan Cooley. This is where I think Yaroslavkovsky will fall to if my scenario for the number two pick goes through. Yeah, and, and it could happen. Um, I have Simone Nemich here because I'm, I'm reading the tea leaves a little bit and uh, Jacob Chikrin's not going to be there for that much longer. And while I live, like Victor Soderstrom, they're not loaded with young D-men or at least ones who could possibly play top pairing. So I, I think... I think they're going to go with Nemich, even though, yes, those other options are all great and probably um, better, but I think they're going to go for need here. I, I do. And and I look, and Nemich is a hell of a player. Anyhow, it's not like it's that much of a reach. Yeah, I, I should have said that uh, I think that they will pick Logan Cooley if Yaroslavkovsky takes by whoever the Devils trade their right. pick to in that number two slot so i think that cooley and slavkovsky will go two three i'm just not sure what order yet based okay. on if there's a trade but yeah i just think that the temptation of an offensive threat always outweighs the defensive need especially for teams like the coyotes but the defense does produce offense he's an offensive defenseman I know. I'm just, right. that's, that's where I got to take this one. Okay. All right. Uh, we will be coming back next with the next set of picks, uh, four through seven, including that flyers pick at number five. I know you can't wait to hear what we're going to say on that front, but first we are going to hear about our friends over at built bar who have now, brought their coconut brownie chunk built bar into a puff. That's right. The coconut brownie chunk built bar flavor you love in a deliciously chewy marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. It's like a fluffy cloud of coconut brownie goodness, but it's also good for you. It's low calorie, low sugar, high protein, and all delicious. It's the perfect treat, perfect when you've got that craving, you need to satisfy a sweet tooth, or if you need a healthy snack, they're an excellent source of protein. All Built Bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently, and that provides a ton of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. Coconut Brownie Chunk Puffs are only here for a limited time, so go to Built.com now to make sure you don't miss out. They're going fast because they taste amazing. 
delicious coconut, rich, sweet brownie, creamy marshmallow. You can't beat it. So go to built.com right now to order your box of coconut brownie chunk built puffs right now. Use the promo code locked 15. You'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code locked 15 at built.com. Like we've been talking about, the NHL draft is this week, and our team of local hosts and draft experts at Locked On are breaking it down with insights and analysis for every first round pick. Subscribe to Locked On Flyers, that's our show over on YouTube, plus Locked On NHL. You'll get all the breakdowns on the NHL draft and more. All right, Russ, we are at the number four pick. That is the Seattle Kraken and Erica over at Locked On Seattle Kraken picked Simon Nemich for this fourth overall pick. Uh, who you got? Uh, I, I think they're going to go with Logan Cooley if he hasn't gone yet. I think they would go with that one, two, Matty Beneers, Logan Cooley. That would serve them well. I think Hackstall would like that. Cooley's good two way. Be a really good fit for them. Yeah, I can't disagree with that in a lot of ways. I think if he does fall, I, I think all of those points make a lot of sense. And I think he's su just such a well-rounded player. And for this expansion team situation, they need kind of guys that can fit in whenever and wherever. Yes. And I think that's a huge part of what they're going to need to do to take that next step forward and get closer to being a competing team. Uh, Logan Cooley could be a big part of it. Defense, like you said, also wins you championships. And so I think that, you know, there's been this conversation between Simon Nemec and David Yurichek of who was, mm -hmm. you know, of those two defensemen who you're going to pick over the other. And I think just the conventional wisdom says Nemec is the guy you go with in these situations that uh, Yurichek just has a little bit further to go in terms of development to get there. And so that's why I agree with Erica. And I think that the Kraken are going to take Nemec, assuming he's available in that number four slot. I think it just makes uh, so much sense for them. Yeah, I, I could see it. It definitely could happen. Uh, I still think Yurichek is better than Nemec, and I will continue to say that. I agree with you in a lot of ways. I think that his ceiling seems to be higher. I yeah. just think that Nemec seems to be more of a reliable bet, but Yurichek could be ultimately better in the long run. You just It's a little bit more of a gamble. Not much, yeah. but a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. So that's kind of where I'm at with those two. And uh, with that, we have reached the number five pick overall, and that is for our Philadelphia Flyers. And uh, when we did our mock draft, we said it would be David Yurichek uh, for many of the reasons we have talked about already. But uh, do you think it'll be any different, Russ? I, I don't. And I think now with so much doubt about Ryan Ellis, it has to be Yurichek if he's there. It doesn't matter how much I like Matt Savoy, I'd probably lose the argument at the table because if if they know more than, you know, they're telling the public on Ellis and they feel like he's going to sit out this year or be out for a big portion of this year and then we're going to cross our fingers that he can get through a season and not have to get surgery or whatever, who knows what's coming down the road, then you really need another big-time defenseman here if you can get one. Yeah, I God, I think I, I want that to be true more than anything on this planet. I would, I would <laughs> Is like- Is it too rational of thinking for you? It's too rational thinking for me. And I feel like the Flyers, except for, and I'm gonna like probably piss off some people, but it's okay. Except for the Nolan Patrick pick, which I think was very logical and very rational at that time. Just, mm -hmm. I wanna repeat that, at that no, time. No, it was, it was. It was very logical and very rational. And other than that, they seem to not be completely logical mm -hmm. or rational. <laughs> and they seem to just like get it in, in their heads that they know better than everybody else out there about the potential of some other person. Yeah, I mean, so, so here's where that could come true. So with Cutter Gauthier, um, the issue would be if who, they that's who I think they're going to pick, by the way, who if they believe he's the next Austin, Austin Matthews, which I don't believe. And I did see Matthews at a young age and I've seen him at a young age. Um, if they believe that and that's what they've believe at the table, 
then they're going to take him because they see what he's done with the Leafs. Yeah, and I think that the other thing is recency bias that's going to affect the Flyers yes. here because I feel like that's something that does affect the Flyers in their drafting to a large degree. Well, it and... did with Scott Lawton as an example. I brought that up yeah. before. Yeah, and Lawton's so, good, and... but he was taken in a he spot where people were like, "Too early, mm, yeah, too early." He was taken too early, and that's where I feel like the U18s. Cutter Gautier had a really good tournament. He did. And I think that's where this recency bias is going to come into play for the Flyers. They're going to get distracted and kind of second guess themselves and say, no, 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 we know better. And our scouts are magic. And and so they're going to go with Gautier. Yeah. And listen, and he's a test. terrific player. Like I, I, yeah. I, I, I've written about him. I've glowed about him. I just don't know if he's going to be a center. I've seen him play center, which is more than some because, you know, he would play like center every once every like five, six games for the NTDP. And I happen to be live at one of them and, and he's good at it. Is he mm -hmm. going to be good at it defensively? I don't know. That's the part where I worry about it for him. Um, what I brought up about faceoffs the other day, people have said, yeah, they think they'll, he'll get better enough. With face That's something that you can work on. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something you can work on. Same as defense, but it doesn't always work for you. But I said, all right, mm -hmm. I'll give up on the uh, face-off end. But then the defensive end, that's another, you know, that's a big part of that job. And to be honest, when he did play center, the game I saw him, I didn't notice great defensive play. Because, again, he's playing with the NTDP, he had an all-star line. Like, he didn't necessarily have to either. So, BC, he's not going to have those kinds of superstars next to him. So, we'll see. Yeah, I I think it's just uh, anything can happen at this draft. And the Flyers, again, have certainly had a history of surprising us. So I, I think that's why my gut says they're going to make that pick. But then we get to the Columbus Blue Jackets in the number six position. And uh, Jay over at Locked on Columbus Blue Jackets pricked uh, Frank Nazar, which I think is a good pick, but it's just a little high. I think there are other guys who have a higher upside that were still available at that time. And I think if the Flyers pick Gautier at number five, Columbus says, oh my God, David Yerichek's still here. We're taking him. Yes. If that scenario happens, I believe you're right. I'm going to say they're taking Cutter Gautier there, but I would also just say that uh, I don't think it will be Nazar because I would take Savoy, Lekaramaki, or mm -hmm. Kemmel over Nazar. And Nazar is a heck of a player. But yeah, those guys are more, high. yeah, it's just a little high. Those guys are a little more known for scoring um, or at least goal scoring. And Nazar is terrific, but there's still things he has to work on. But either way, that's that's the way I think it's going to go. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I think it, it could flip-flop depending on what happens. But mm -hmm. um, given who's available at that slot, I, I just see – it being a pretty simple choice for Columbus, where I think it starts getting a little bit more dicey in terms of predicting is this next number seven slot with the mm -hmm. Ottawa Senators. And um, our friend Ross over at Locked On Sends, uh, they picked Cutter Gautier in this position because he was available. And he could be there. He could be there. And I think that's a pick that the Senators would make if he's... Yes available in our scenarios he's not available and so this is where i think savoy goes because i think that ottawa thinks they need flashy goal scoring from sort of a selling the team mm -hmm. kind of way they're going to get this new building they want a dynamic goal scorer they want to kind of duplicate maybe what montreal has done with cole caulfield they're like oh we can get our own cole caulfield and it'll be great and so that's why i think the senators are going to pick Savoy. So I've gone a different route because with Ottawa, you always do have to worry about paying guys and when they want mm -hmm. to pay and all those kinds of things. And I went with the goal scoring aspect too. Uh, but I also went with that guy who's got a two way ability better than, well, not better than Savoy, but better than like Karamaki. And that's Joachim Kemmel because he is a goal scorer. He is a right. very accurate guy. Uh, he's a little smaller. That's fine. I don't think that's going to scare them off because they have some bigger players they they could put around him. But also, he doesn't have to get paid right away. He could stay over in 
in Finland for a year or two, whereas a CHL guy by year two, you've got to decide if you're signing him or not. That's yeah. the, and that's a shame, right? This is like otherwise I would be with you on Savoy, but now I'm taking into the account the economics of this team who technically right now the family owns it. We don't even know what's happening. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a fair point. I just I just see them kind of going in the opposite direction of spending the money and getting flashy about things because they feel like it's a it's a reset for them mm-hmm. as a franchise from a reputational standpoint. Front, like I said, with the are- with the new arena going in downtown, they just want to be like you know, not your father's Ottawa Senators. I don't know. Like, they need to hire but... a few people around Pierre Dorian to make me think that. Yes. They're, they're, right now, they're pretty short staffed. Still, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> all, right, all right, we have three more teams in the top ten to talk about coming up next. That's Detroit, Buffalo, and Anaheim. But first, we are going to hear about our friends at Rock Auto. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer from expert mechanics to beginner do-it-yourselfers. They have everything you can need, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Whatever you need for your car, you'll be able to find it and get your car in shape. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Okay, Russ, we have three more teams to go in our top 10 of the NHL draft. And the first up is the Detroit Red Wings. And our pals over at Locked On Red Wings picked Brad Lambert, which I think was a bit of a surprise. He's a risky choice. You know, there's some kind of character issues, as they say, with him. And uh, I think that there are still some players with less risk on the table at this point. And so for me, this is where I think Kemmel is going to go, that Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a good fit. I feel like a player like him is going to work really well in a in an organization that Iserman is in charge of, I think he'll know how to get the right complementary pieces to make Kemmel shine in the way that he can. And, you know, you um, talked about him a bunch in the last segment. And, and mm-hmm. you know, for all those reasons, I just think Iserman is too smart to pass up on a guy like, like him. Yeah. If, if, if he was there in my scenario, he's not, and so this is where I think they go with uh, Jonathan Lekaramaki because uh, he may have the most upside as far as goal scoring potential. He's got mm-hmm. a great shot, but he's also a great passer. He's, he's really He's got like a quick trigger on his passing. Very good hockey IQ, especially in the offensive zone. So this is a, a guy with a high offensive end, which Detroit's been collecting him, like with Lucas Raymond. They also have a guy named Nick, Nick Lidstrom overseas who could watch him. Who's so that's, that? Yeah. So that's another <laughs> that's another facet of this where I feel like if Lidstrom starts pushing for him and knows that he could sort of, you know, watch his games, this is somebody where, because again, the Red Wings have so many prospects. The Euro aspect of this, I think you're right about, because again, mm-hmm. I they don't know where they're going to be in two years yet. I know they're underplaying everything and they maybe they'll even make a challenge at the playoffs this year. But if they don't, this keeps them on schedule anyhow. Yeah, I, I think all of that is a, a really good thought process. I think that um, for some reason, like Lekaramaki, like people have been talking about him, but also it, it just feels like he's kind of under the radar a little bit. Even though his numbers were unbelievable, he had something like 14 points in the U- U18s. It was crazy how good he was. And then again, I just think. You know, you you watch that line and all those players are getting talked about. And so maybe for some reason, people are leaving him out and I'm doing the opposite. He was the first guy I 
I went on that line and said, this is the guy. I think the rest are working off of him. But I think that's the what's at play here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we'll see if you're right about that one. In the number nine slot is the Buffalo Sabres. And uh, Joe over at Locked on Sabres picked Joachim Kemmel in this slot, who we've already talked about. Um, I think that would be a smart pick if he's still available. I'm sure that's why Joe uh, yep. snapped him up. Yeah, I mean, if he's there, sure, I could I could go with that pick. I just can't envision him being there, even, even at his stature, I don't think so. Yeah, and so that's why I kind of went with a little bit of a reach here and said that they're going to take Connor Geeky. I think they're okay. going to be tempted by the big guy. And he's good, right? And I yeah, think he's very that, good. Um, I think he again, you know, he's one of those guys who's I think if he pans out really well, his ceiling could be really high. Um, but the risk is a little bit higher in taking him. And I just think the Sabers are looking to take risks like that right now. And again, with a big dynamic forward like that, um, I I think this is where they might reach a little bit. Plus, they have another pick in the round. So they're going to get another guy anyway, so they might as well take a risk. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no question the risk is in his skating because otherwise mm -hmm. he's a heck of a center. Like he really is. So I could see it. I, this is where I have them taking Matt Savoy because I think Savoy could be there. Should he be there? No, but I think he could be. And I think the Sabres, because they have had trouble down the middle, uh, Casey Middlestat's finally sort of coming around, but certainly not what they thought he'd be. And Tage Thompson, they turned into a center. So there's your big center. I don't know if they want a second big center. They might. They might not. But if, if Savoy were there, they would get a center, but they also would get a, a, a terrific scorer too uh, and playmaker. A uh, guy can do it all. So I think if he's there, I could see him going there. I think that's a good fit for them. Yeah, I think that, um, again, if things kind of play out the way that you think they have, that's probably a smart pick. And again, um, you know, it, it is in some ways taking a risk as well. Sure. Like it kind of follows some of the logic that I said. It's just it with does. a different and, guy. And it's a center too. So like you, so we have mm -hmm. two of the th three things in common on this. Yeah. All right. The last pick of the top 10 is the Anaheim Ducks. JD over at Locked on Ducks picked Kevin Korchinski, which... I think it's a pretty solid pick. I think a, a lot of people could see the fit with him and the Ducks organization. I just think that in my scenario, Lekaramaki is still there, and that's where you got to snap him up. Yeah, if Lekaramaki were there, I'd snap him up. No question about it. The The issue with um, Korchinski in the spot is, so he's not going to be the number one because you, you already mm -hmm. have a number one. You have um, Jamie Drysdale. So then he's not really a number two, I don't think, Korchinski. I, I've seen him a bit. He's a really hard worker, yes. Is he rock solid defensively? No. Uh, he's terrific offensively, though, and could skate and could do all those things. So then he's probably your number three or your second power play guy because I still think Drysdale's better. And so, like, if could I'm be, putting, yeah. and if I'm doing that at the 10th pick, I think I'm kind of doing that early. So I'm going to go with Frank Nazar, who – I don't know if he's playing center, but he certainly would look good next to Trevor Zegers either way, because that's two super creative, fast guys that you could have out there at the same time that would really click. And, and again, speed, creativity, getting to loose pucks. You know, this is, he could actually be the guy that feeds Zegers and that could be, you know, magic. No, I think that's a really good thought and would not be surprised to see the Ducks take Nazar at that spot. And I think, you know, some people might think it's still a little bit too high of a slot. They but might. I don't think it's too much of a reach, honestly, in this situation. And given all the points that you said about, you know, how they, they have some really young players that are, you know, playmakers like Zegras. And I think this might be a good fit. So, yeah. And a big wild card is Marco Casper. Like, he... Mm -hmm. I keep hearing muttering and like, you know, he might go top 10, top, top eight, because he's like sort of like this guy that's a nice, safe pick who's a scorer and complete he's player. Good right Austrian now. kid. Yeah. So I like my Austrian kids. It's so. it, it wouldn't shock me if, you know, he he got in there somehow just because that's what a team wanted. Well, there you have it. That is our top 10. 
NHL. Throw Monica. tomatoes at the screen if you want. It's fine. Exactly. We are looking forward to the comments. Uh, and you can send them to us on Twitter at Locked On Flyers. You can email us at lockedonflyers at gmail.com. Of course, you can comment on the post over on YouTube as well. Let us know what you think. We will be back again tomorrow. I am Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. You made us your first listen today. Now make your second listen, Locked On NHL. Locked On experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. That's where you stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked On NHL, your 30-minute NHL podcast. Have a great day, everyone.